There's not too much downtime in the life of an executive chef, but even when Elijah Holland is out of the kitchen, he's still working. Elijah, what are we looking for when we're foraging for seaweed? Well, look, we're looking with seaweed, you want to make sure, first of all, that if you're you know, harvesting or getting from areas that you do have any of the right permits that you might need, yep. you need to do it. Uh, but also, if you're just collecting different seaweed, more about trying to get shore cast seaweed. So, you know, beach cast seaweed, seaweed that's already kind of washed up or it's broken loose and coming apart. And then there are species that are non-natives yeah. and they're actually overtaking some of the ecosystems. And species like that, then, you know, they're more better to be able to cut loose and take. But if there's a, hardly any seaweed at all, well, you know, we don't want to be just trying to destroy any ecosystems or anything like that. This one is golden kelp or Eclonia yeah. radiator. And it's a really lovely uh, species of kelp. It's a little bit thinner and smaller than the big bull kelp. So as it is, really tough, really dense. What are we doing to this to get it to its basic, most edible form? Yeah, so what I would be doing first with it, I would be roasting it yep. to really caramelise and get all those flavours intensified and then just drying it out. It can even be eaten just as is. Or if you wanted to make some chips for yourself, you could be spraying it with something, putting some extra flavours on it. But for me, I like to use it as a, a, a powder and as a seasoning or a okay. spice. So this is a, another little favourite one of mine. These ones, they're like the little capers of the sea. So with seaweeds, and especially this one, you want to make sure that you're harvesting if, you know, in small amounts so you don't detach it from the rocks whatsoever and you just remove a couple of the little kind of segments. Yeah. Um, so this, if you just break off one of these and have a little eat of one of these, and it just tastes it's like a little salty little caper. So it's like the caper, oh, yeah. caper of the ocean, and if you get some of the bigger ones, they just really... They just explode in your mouth. It's just explode with this beautiful kind of salty, crisp flavour. Wow. So, but it's a, it's a great little addition to seafood dishes, pastas, throw them in pastas whole. A really beautiful pickled as well. Or just to add as a little fresh element to something. I'm in. That's it. Elijah's whole food philosophy is to combine wild ingredients from the same ecosystems. And these sand dunes are covered in a forest of food. How many varieties would you say are kind of amongst us right now? Oh, right now there's well over 15 to 20 different varieties that we just specifically actually even use in and around on the restaurant. Wow. All edible. All edible, On yeah. the menu, sweet and savoury. That's it. Sweet, savoury and drinking. Wow. Yeah. What's this one, mate? So this one's some beautiful bower spinach. So in the same family as Warrigal Greens, which is kind of its big brother, but is more up north. This is kind of the creeping, crawling one of, you know, the lower states down here. But it's got these really beautiful, crisp, succulenty leaves. Yeah. Not only just really good, I think it's a lot better replacement for baby spinach or, um, you know, a green like that. Uh, and the flavour's a lot better and it really holds up the texture a lot more. You know, with baby spinach or even English spinach, it's sometimes you just wilt it and it yeah. just goes to nothing. This, you can feel it really holds up. So this is strong enough to be able to throw on a hot grill, you know, and then toss in a pan or, you know, whatever else you might want to do. Or, also, it can go on the other side as well, because it's got all these salty, hearty flavours. This one is actually used, I use on the menu, and uh, what we do is we, uh, we candy and crystallise the leaves, and we make them part of uh, one of the little desserts we have on the menu that's called a trip to the Bass Strait Coast. I feel like this is the perfect example of nature knowing best. Here we are out in the elements, and it's absolutely thriving. All these wild plants, because you haven't been, you know, once again, watering them, fertilising things, they, they have to send the roots deeper, so that means the plant is more struggling to survive, so it has to really fight for its life. And in doing so, it finds more nutrients and minerals, which in turn makes the plant tastier. Another interesting one here, seaberry saltbush. There's the beautiful leaves that can be eaten and they're edible. Uh, and then also you have with this one as well, the beautiful um, kind of berries on it as well. Uh, and this saltbush is actually really interesting because although it's called a saltbush, it's actually in the beetroot family. And it has these really Moorish kind of flavours of roasted, cooked, but sticky, almost bitter beetroot with these beautiful little uh, berries that are on it. You can have a little taste, but it's very, it's very kind of strong and it can be a little bit bittersweet. This, we actually get it and collect it and we turn it into a vinegar and we use it on as a little fresh salad with gooseberries and salt bush and all together with a bit of seawater. Okay, so we're using this part of it, but also the leaves. Is this about minimal wastage? Are we using as much yeah. of the plant as possible? Absolutely, and I think that's a very important thing with any foraging that you do. 
rather than just only taking off the leaves, we try to use the leaves, we use the flowers and we use the berries as well. Now, before we all go down to the beach and start hacking at the closest bush, it's important to note that Elijah has spent years learning what's what. I mean, I learned a lot from my parents, but over the last eight years as being a chef, I really started to explore and try to find out about everything that was around me. So when I'd go for, you could go out hunting or go diving or spearfishing, I was always interested in the plants that would grow in and around. And especially as being a chef, you know, you notice some similarities and you go, oh, I wonder what that is. You know, can I eat that or what can you do with it? But, the, you know, the interesting thing is every day you find more and more and more edible different species and then the, the health benefits from them you found are just, you, know, you find are just amazing. I'm astounded by what Elijah was finding and identifying as food. Plus, he knows what to do with it, so you get the best and the most unusual flavours. His knowledge base is just so impressive, Dar. Sure is. Now, hold that thought, Joe, because Elijah is going to prepare some kind of amazing dish from the seaweed and the plants that he found on that trip, and we'll see the results of that a bit later on in the show. If you want to see more of the forage food dishes that Elijah creates, check out his Instagram. And if you're inspired to forage yourself, go out with an expert because some plants, particularly mushrooms, are poisonous. Good advice there, Joe. Up next, we meet the Aussie playground entrepreneur who's bringing joy to kids all around the world. It's right here on The House of Wellness.